According to the 1989 UN statistics, there are now 23,000 Protestant denominations that have come out of the sectarian American Protestant experience mainly, with an average of five new ones forming a week. And so Andy Warhol once told us that every American will be famous for 15 minutes in the TV age of 100 cable stations. Well, he may or may not be right, but it looks like every American's going to have his own denomination for 15 minutes. And we are a country of migratory spirituality. We keep joining new churches and journeying and so on and reforming and combining and splitting. For me, I remember as a child, if you had said, what's church history? I did not think of Byzantium and the great sweep of the church. For me, church history was the history of my particular denomination that had split in the 1950s from its parent denomination, which itself was an offshoot of another Protestant denomination. In my case, it was all in the Presbyterian part of the evangelical milieu, but it could have been Baptist or anything else. And so in my novel, Portofino, one of the little running gags I have is that this little boy keeps trying to keep track of the acronyms the PC USA, the PCCC USA, the PC USA C, whatever, he can't remember what they're part of anymore. Because even in his short life, it has been split, reconfigure, leave, travel, go, look, search. But of course, this was nothing to do with religion only. This is the price you pay in a sectarian society. You don't like Cleveland, upstakes, leave your half-finished building, head for Denver. That doesn't work out, go to the West Coast. When you've trashed your little plot of land here, move on. The nation that was adept at finding ways to build a new plow was also adept at finding ways to have new religions. And you know, we not only have sectarian Protestantism, we have sectarian religiosity to the point where you have everything from Mormonisms to the Jehovah's Witness and the rest coming up with their own scriptures their own instant American traditions, where now Christ shows up to talk to Native Americans because you have your own homegrown version. This is a nation of homegrown everything. Remember, the national anthem is, I did it my way. This is the nation of individualism. This is the nation that if you wanted to draw up a plan for a culture as far away from the traditions of Christianity as you could when it comes to responsibility, accountability, community, tradition, changeless, non-negotiable truth, surely this is the culture you would design. And so for me, in looking at that question combined with my own sense of a lack of progress in my own life spiritually, I really, at one point, about, oh, 12, 15 years ago, began to say, look, enough is enough. I'm not getting very far with my own spiritual life. The culture that supposedly has been built on Christianity, if you believe fundamentalist Protestant mythology, is not a Christian culture at its core. I'm going around the country trying to call people back to being good God-fearing Americans. What happens if there never were any? And that when you call people back, quote unquote, you're simply to use this analogy calling people back to the 1950s out of the 1960s. But of course, the 1950s will always give birth to the 1960s because middle-class American pietistic civil religion always will breed rebels who finally say, why should I put up with this? You have to understand there's no use going back to an earlier stage of a corrupt system. If you go back into Hitler's Germany and you say, well, if we just could go back to 1931 instead of, instead of 1935 or 1940, of course, you're just going to the earlier stage of the Nazi anti-Semitic crusade. As a man thinketh, so is he. When the seeds of the idea are there, the problem is already there in its infancy. We all know that. And so I began to wonder if there wasn't something more for my own Christian life in the area of accountability, confession, worship, sacrament. Why did Christianity have to be so trivialized? Why did it have to always seem as if you were making it up as you go along? Reinventing the wheel. Music in your church is something somebody decided to write on Friday night with the guitar. They probably shouldn't have even taken the guitar up to begin with. They're no good at it. But <laughs> your liturgy is this kind of instant liturgy of personal conscience. It's the Monday morning women's Bible study version of Christianity. Whatever Jesus laid on my heart, I'll just spout out as thus saith the Lord. It's the Friday night pastor preparing his sermon because 
unlike an Orthodox church where he's facing the altar and he's not putting on a show for the people, but rather leading the priesthood of all believers in worship, the sermon becomes a show. Spirituality is the feeling you have after a good sermon. The music is supposed to fill you somehow emotionally and give you that lift. And I kept wondering, well, why so trivialized? Why so hollow? Where is the dignity? Where is the glory? Where is the honor? Where is the worship? Where is the still small voice in all these entertainments we call worship today? 